Hi everybody, my name is Michael Vorlinder and I will show you the fundamentals of sound. Up in space there is no sound, but here in the atmosphere there is. And in this lecture we will understand what is sound about, how is sound uh, calculated by physics theory in the medium air. A medium in rest, such as air, is illustrated in the upper picture by the blue bubbles. And these blue bubbles illustrate just the molecules of air nitrogen and oxygen and uh, in rest this medium is characterized by the static pressure. What is the static pressure? Everybody knows from the weather forecast what is the static pressure. Indicated in this case is 100.3 kilopascals which determines the certain weather condition of low or high pressure. The second quantity is the static density. This means how heavy is air? We can weigh an amount of air, let's take one cubic meter, and the weight is about 1.2 or 1.3 kilograms. When we now consider variations of pressure and density, as illustrated in the upper plot here, we see the density change. There's a higher density zone illustrated by more bubbles in a small region or less bubbles in a small region, indicating low and high pressure zones. In this lecture we will derive the theory for calculating those pressure changes. In the same time we will also find density changes and temperature changes. The basic sound field variables we will use are the particle displacement, the temporal derivative of the particle displacement, we call it particle velocity, and the resulting pressure change, we call it sound pressure. To calculate the theory with the governing basic equations, we illustrate the medium by just a one-dimensional sketch uh, and we take out a little portion of a medium between x and x plus delta x. This is uh, bounded in a tube with a surface s and to the right x variable. The first equation is the Newton-Euler equation. It means force equals mass times acceleration. Everybody is well familiar with that. In this case we calculate uh, the force by considering a pressure difference between the left side and the right side. Anything else will be trivial because then there is no pressure variation at all, so our medium is in rest again. But we are interested in the medium which is not in rest. So we have a difference determined on the left side by the term in the uh, brackets which is a pressure difference, multiplied with the surface, we get a force. On the right side, we see the term well-known mass times acceleration. The mass is nothing but the cross-section times the thickness of this little piece of medium uh, times the density, and the acceleration is the derivative of the particle velocity. This equation can now be transformed a little bit into a mathematically more compact form by uh, going to very small differences uh, dx. So we get this differential equation shown below with certain approximations with refer to assumption of small effects. We can simplify this equation to this one. So the pressure gradient is equal to the density times the acceleration. The meaning is still force equals mass times acceleration. The second sound field equation means mass conservation. We take again a small portion of our medium, but now we consider a mass flow on the left side and on the right side. The mass flow is not zero in total, so you can consider that on the right side there is a little different mass flowing in than on the other side flowing out. You can well compare this with a situation in a local city bus where there is a certain amount of people in the bus. On the next bus stop, some people get out. On the following bus stop, more people get in. So the density, which means the compactness of people uh, sitting in the bus, is changed. In equations, this reads as the surface, uh, again, which means the cross-section, times the difference of mass flow equals to the volume and a change of density. We can write this in a compact form again, in a differential equation, and again with approximations we can simplify this. 
One problem of the second equation, however, is that we have a third variable, which is the density. Remember that in the first equation there was a relationship between the particle velocity and the pressure. Here we have an equation between the particle velocity and the density. We like to have just two variables because we only have two equations and uh, there is no way to solve two equations with three variables. What to do? We are trying now to um, get a relationship between the pressure and the density. And this is given in a thermodynamic state equation. We have one illustrated here. It is on the y-axis the pressure, the total pressure in this medium air, and on the x-axis the total density. This equation is uh, well known as the so-called adiabatic equation of pressure and density. And uh, now we need to consider that uh, the sound pressure and the sound density is just a little change on the static pressure and the static density. So we have the difference given by the total pressure minus the static pressure. In the same time, the difference introduced by the sound is the difference between the total density and the static density. Assuming a change of pressure, which is sound, leads to a change of density and this change is small around the equilibrium state, P0 and Rho0 respectively. If we consider now the curve as approximately linear in slope, zooming into this curve and we see just a straight line, we can discuss the slope of this straight line by taking into account the derivative of the pressure over the density as a constant. This constant is called c square. This slide summarizes our two equations. We see these uh, plots of the medium on the left side and the equations after the approximations on the right side. Still we have in the second equation rho instead of p, but we know how to solve that. We introduce c square and we get p. This is uh, the equation in a more general form. Instead of the derivative according to x, uh, we introduce now the gradient. So in 3D, everything looks very much similar. We don't have x, but we have a gradient in this case, and we have the more general formulation in 3D. Here we see our two equations again, and the next task will be to uh, apply an insertion rule by uh, processing those equations. The first one is processed by a space derivative, the second one is processed by time derivative, and this way we see that the term including the particle velocity is identical. We can now see and insert this term, and the rest is just the second derivative to space of the pressure, and the right side is just the second derivative of pressure to the time with the constant. This concludes our lecture of today. This is the wave equation. In more general form, we can express also this in the Laplace operator form. And uh, the compact notation is delta p is 1 over c square times p double dot. This equation is called wave equation. It connects the time derivative of the pressure with the space derivative of the pressure and involved is the constant c. In the next lecture we will solve this equation and we will see what waves are about.